embarking on the journey of indie game development is a thrilling blend of creativity, technical acumen, and entrepreneurial spirit. If you dream of releasing your own game and perhaps one day building a thriving game development studio, it all begins with careful preparation, continual learning, and a willingness to adapt. Here is a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide to help you go from your first lines of code to a sustainable indie studio, all while navigating the exhilarating and sometimes daunting world of game development. The first phase in this journey is laying a solid foundation by learning the basics of game development. Understanding the game development pipeline is crucial. This pipeline isn't just a buzzword. It forms the backbone of every successful game project. At its core, there are five key areas to master. Game design, programming, art, audio, and production. Game design is where your vision takes shape. Here, you'll define the mechanics that drive the gameplay, craft the rules that govern your world, and map out the experiences you want your players to have. Programming brings these ideas to life, transforming design documents into interactive digital experiences using logic, code, and scripts. Art enlivens your world through 2D or 3D assets, character and environment design, and animations that give personality to your creations. Audio, often overlooked by newcomers, provides the emotional heartbeat of your game. Music, sound effects, and ambient noises all contribute to immersion. Finally, production ties everything together. Project management ensures deadlines are met, resources are allocated wisely, and the finished game makes its way into players' hands through publishing. With the pipeline in mind, the next step is choosing your tools. The right tool set can empower you to bring your creative vision to life, regardless of your skill level or budget. Today's most popular game engines include Unity, which uses CPy and is renowned for its versatility and strong community support. Unreal Engine, favored for high-fidelity visuals and robust blueprint scripting, relying on C++ for deeper functionality, and Godot, a rising open-source engine known for its lightweight design and flexibility with GDScript and CIFA support. For art, consider Asaprite for pixel art, Blender for 3D modeling and animation, and Photoshop or Krita for 2D artwork. When it comes to audio, free and accessible tools like Audacity make editing a breeze, while FL Studio provides a professional environment for composing music. For sound effects, BFXR is a fantastic resource for creating retro-inspired sounds quickly and easily. Once you've chosen your tools, it's time to start learning. The internet is brimming with resources to help you, many of them free or low cost. YouTube channels such as Brackies, Game Dev TV, and GD Quest offer step-by-step -step tutorials on virtually every aspect of development. Online platforms like Udemy and Coursera provide structured courses while FreeCodeCamp and GameDev.tv deliver practical, hands-on learning. Don't overlook books, either. The Art of Game Design by Jesse Schell and Game Programming Patterns offer invaluable insights into the craft and structure of game design and programming. With a basic understanding in place, the second phase is all about building your skills through hands-on experience. Here, the mantra is simple. Make small games. Don't aim for your magnum opus just yet. Use tutorials as a starting point and modify them to make the projects your own. Game jams, like Ludum Dare or the GMTK Gig Game Jam, are excellent opportunities to practice under real constraints with themes that spark creativity and deadlines that foster focus. When creating these early projects, focus on a single core mechanic. It's better to have a simple, polished game than an ambitious, unfinished one. Aim for short development cycles of one to four weeks, which allows you to iterate quickly and learn from each project. As you build small games, begin assembling a portfolio. Publishing your projects is essential, both for personal development and for visibility in the broader game development community. Platforms like itch.io and Newgrounds are welcoming spaces for indie developers to share their creations and receive feedback. As your skills grow, consider releasing games on Steam, which provides access to a vast audience. Maintain a development log. 
a devlog, through blog posts or video updates, record gameplay footage, create trailers, and share your progress. These assets not only showcase your work, they also build interest in your projects and demonstrate your commitment to potential collaborators or employers. Equally important is joining game development communities. These spaces are invaluable for networking, learning, and sharing your journey. Discord servers dedicated to game dev, the REOR game dev subreddit, and social media platforms like Twitter, now X, TikTok, and YouTube are teaming with developers of all skill levels. Participate in discussions, ask for feedback, and offer your insights. Attend game development meetups or expos, both local and global, to connect with peers, discover new tools and techniques, and maybe even meet future collaborators. With your skills sharpened and your portfolio growing, it's time to enter the third phase, preparing for your first indie game release. The transition from hobbyist to professional begins by designing a small, marketable game. Focus on developing a single, unique hook, a mechanic or style that distinguishes your game from the countless others vying for players' attention. Keep the project's scope manageable and scalable. It's better to finish a small, polished game than to get lost in the enormity of an overambitious project. Pay attention to trends and niches. Genres like horror, roguelikes, or cozy games often have passionate communities eager for new experiences. Once your concept is solid, build and polish a vertical slice. This is a playable demo showcasing your game's core loop, the essence that will hook players and impress potential publishers. Concentrate on making the first five minutes as engaging as possible. First impressions are crucial, especially in a crowded marketplace. Playtesting and iteration are your allies here. Share your demo with friends, family, and online communities. Gather feedback early and often, and be willing to make changes. Fix user experience issues, adjust pacing, and refine difficulty balance. Remember, your game is only as good as the experience it delivers to players. Start marketing early. Build a devlog and share your progress on platforms like Twitter, TikTok, or YouTube. Create a Steam page as soon as possible. Steam wishlists are an important metric, and the earlier you're visible, the better. Set up a landing page to capture emails using tools like MailChimp or Card. These contacts will be invaluable when it comes time to launch. As your game nears completion, prepare for the business side of things. Learn the basics of forming a business, whether as a solo developer, partnership, or LLC. Understand your local tax obligations, draft contracts if you're working with others, and explore different revenue models. Indie developers often turn to crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter, apply for grants, or seek publisher partnerships to secure funding. Carefully consider your monetization strategy. Premium games where players pay upfront are common on PC and console. Free-to-play with in-app purchases is prevalent on mobile. Episodic releases or downloadable content, DLC, can help sustain player interest and generate ongoing revenue. Prepare thoroughly for your game's launch. Craft a compelling trailer and press kit. Plan a social media schedule and reach out to streamers, influencers, 